we are on our way to the Jesse Owens Birthplace and Museum. And it is in rural Alabama, the little town of Oakville. So it's only about an hour's drive from Huntsville, Alabama. Great day trip. in North Alabama, Correct. and I'm so excited to talk to her as I've been researching the life and legacy of Jesse Owens. So thanks so much for joining me here today. I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, Nancy is a wealth of information, and you and your husband began this project. Uh, actually, I was not involved from the beginning so much as a support system for my husband, uh, Mr. Thurman White, who lived in the community, uh, was retired from the military, okay. which might interest you. And, uh, I was teaching school. and uh, Locally, my you husband, teaching school? Yes, I taught fourth grade at Hatton Elementary. And my husband worked for Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. Sure. And Mr. Thurman White, a black gentleman who lived in the community and was retired military, came to him and said that they had purchased this land. A few of them in the community, he had used actually his own money okay. uh, to make up what they needed. He wanted to honor Jesse at his birthplace okay. in some way. And he came to James and wanted to know if he could help him. Yeah. That was in the early 1990s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and not that long ago in history. Well, 23 years. Yeah. Or so. Yeah. It probably seems longer because you've been in the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've had another career after my career. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they actually ended up becoming like brothers. There was a monument in the community which had been provided by a local representative. They got a lot of support from government officials, from um, businesses, corporations, churches, just people in the community. And the project, actually Auburn University, okay. helped with the original plan. Okay. Came and did surveys and um, Atlanta Olympics, you know, was to be in 96, the head of the U.S. Olympic Committee. Okay. And his name was Leroy Walker. And so my husband and some of the committee made a presentation and then they had a conversation with Leroy. They had a model of what the park was to be like when it was completed and showed it to Leroy and talked about that this was Jesse's birthplace. And he said, well, I knew Jesse. He said, I knew he was from Alabama, but I did not know where. And James said, well, if you could get the torch to go about 17 miles off the planned route, you could have the torch come right through his Opal. birthplace. Yeah. Opal. Well, in a few weeks, they formally announced the route. It had been planned, but part of it was changed to go through here. Oh, wonderful. So we were getting, then we continually got calls just we bombarded with how can we contribute. Right. Excellent. So then the support started to come in. Right. Yeah. And, and rather than we don't have enough money, it was like, how are we going to get this done? How can we get started? Right. So, um, yeah. so that was an exciting time. Yeah, and that was, so that was 96. 96. And when did you officially open the doors? Okay, we did have parts of the museum, parts of the park open. The museum was not open. Okay. The uh, visitor center was done. Uh, we had the replica home done. This was a shell. Okay. And they did park the torch here for 30 minutes. We fed the Olympic entourage. Okay. Uh, so, and we had, you know, Congress Do you remember who the runner was? Didn't they have a runner? Well, well 
That's another story. That's another whole story. <laughs> yeah. So James thought it would be great to have Stuart Rankin, who is Jesse's grandson, oh, wow. to bring the torch in. Yeah. It was rather chilling because he looked so much like his granddaddy. Oh, and how um, powerful. Yeah, it was. It really yeah. was. I don't think everybody realized how well. I mean, I just had chills all over me yeah. because you fell in Jesse's ear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Stuart uh, brought it in, and then James and Thurman took it out, oh, that's which nice. was so appropriate. Thurman was very dedicated to this park. I'm just so glad. So tell me more about the museum. Who okay. helped design it? And um, it was designed by, by a firm in Birmingham. Okay. The interior designed this way in Birmingham, designed it, and um, James, my husband, and the designer and another committee member flew to Ohio State. The, the Jesse Owens family had arranged for them to look at all the archives they had given everything they didn't keep to Ohio State. Okay. And so they went through boxes and boxes and boxes and came to an agreement what they could bring down here. Yeah. And uh, then the firm designed it around that. That's but of course, the first thing before that was for them to fly to Chicago and meet the family and get permission mm -hmm. because you don't use Jesse's name without permission. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. They've been very supportive over the years. In fact, we, we consider ourselves family now. Yeah. So our most common reaction when people come in and come around this corner is either this is a hidden treasure or I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can imagine. Because we are out in the middle of a rural area. I know. <laughs> I know. I, house am, around. I intentionally filmed that. Um, I mean, you hear. <laughs> I said, just to let you know how rural we're going in Alabama, right. check out the scenery as we drive. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, because we were, in, and then to be behind the tractor, that was hysterical. It was like all the pieces <laughs> came together to fit. So what can people expect when they um, come in? When they come uh, To be surprised. <laughs> to be pleasantly surprised, I think. We are a small museum, but um, we're packed full of information about Jesse. We have a sports gallery where you will see some of his memorabilia, replicas of his uniforms, Adidas, which were wool, which is surprising. I can't, I can't even imagine. Uh, yeah. And uh, Adidas replicated his shoes. The gentleman who was a shoemaker in Berlin, later he, his firm became Adidas. Oh, wow. So they replicated the shoes in Germany. Okay. Uh, his running shoes and his some of his medals are here. We um, have those on display. A lot of information about his high school career because he really excelled. Yes. Yeah. Beginning in high school, yeah. they recognized his talent. The sports gallery is just one little section here. Um, so we have the timeline of his life. We have an amazing. I guess the most popular thing is the documentary, Return to Berlin. Okay. Uh, I'm excited to watch that. <laughs> I know, it, it's a favorite, and um, it was done in the early 60s, but Greenspan was the director. And um, Jesse narrates it himself. He went back to Berlin, he stands in the stadium. Really? Right. And so you see, quickly see how articulate he was. So they, he talks about the events and uh, they show footage, original footage from the 36 Olympics. So what are the hours with COVID and your recommendations for health, safety, with what's going on in the world right now? Okay. For coming to the birthplace of the museum. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly been a learning experience. Um, well, we are trying to follow CDC guidelines. We were closed for a couple of months. Now we sanitize multiple times daily. When you come in, you're expected to wear a mask. Uh, if you don't have one, we have one for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we sanitize our pens after you sign in the register. Yes. We sanitize everything, including chairs people sit in, just as soon as they get up and move about, just so in case somebody else comes along. Right. So I think you can feel a safe 
as you know you would any theater, right? We yeah. have. Yeah. And what do you do your summer hours? Or that? Okay. okay. Well, our hours are ten to four, okay. Monday through Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday one to four. Okay. And I'll say that's right now. Okay. So I would say call and check. Mm -hmm. Uh, check on Facebook because I do keep that up to date. Or if you call and we don't answer, I do have our current hours on the phone. Okay. You know, on the voicemail. I had such a great time interviewing Nancy. Join us as we walk around the rest of the park and see the memorial and the replica and more. I am Sylvester, one of the ten children of Cleveland and Emma Horn. The family lived here for many years as sharecropper family. In 1922, the family moved to Cleveland, Ohio in search of a better life. You can see more of this sharecropper's house as well as give a try at beating Jesse Owens' famous jump. There was three men out here for an hour and a half one day. <laughs> I left when I ate lunch, came back. They were still jumping. I'm an adult. <laughs> they were on a construction So you crew. can come out here and try to jump. <laughs> Jesse's right. jumps. Here you go. Oh, right yeah. there. It's been everlasting flame. And uh, Miss Ruth lit it to begin with. And then we got the first bill and it was $800. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this is a beautiful um, gift shop that she has put together here and some video footage and books and everything. If you're doing any research on Jesse Owens, you can find it here. And some fun stuff too. Look at the Frisbees. <laughs> for joining us here today on Talking Travel with Wendy. I'm so glad to have met Nancy and sharing a lot of information about the Jesse Owens Birthplace and Museum. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, for sure. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have much more content on my website, travelwithwendy.net, and you can also support this channel by becoming a Patreon patron. The links are below. Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.